Let's see how doable earthly activities would be out there in the cosmos. You open your eyes in the morning, yawn, and stand up from your bed. But standing up means having an up to stand to. In empty space, there's extremely little gravity, almost none for your senses to make sense of. So good luck telling up from down. The universe is mostly empty space between stars and other objects. But in some areas, matter is pressed so densely that it forms black holes. And if you pass the event horizon, you're crossing a border where mornings simply do not exist because time doesn't pass at all. You wouldn't know it, though. If you accidentally fell into a black hole, the difference in gravity between your head and feet would be so immense, your body would get stretched out like a spaghetti noodle. Yes, this process is actually called spaghettification. Um, pass the meatballs, please. And forget about yawning on your new home. Minus the obvious no oxygen thing, you couldn't find a place with the right pressure for it. Venus would be way too much. The pressure there is what it's like at 3,000 feet underwater. Mars wouldn't give enough. It's less than 1% of the pressure on Earth. Even the air outside a plane at cruising altitude is 40 times thicker, and that stuff's unbreathable. Hey, Mars does have some strangely Earth-like features. Look, there are faces, fish, and spoons on the surface. Oh, never mind. Those are just oddly shaped rocks. Now, toothbrushing wouldn't be much different if you don't mind tiny bits of toothpaste floating around you. But showering in zero-g is challenging. The water wouldn't flow down to wash the soap off you and into the drain. You need gravity for that. Astronauts use wet towels to wipe their bodies clean. They don't even have sinks on the ISS or other spacecraft. A rogue planet with a romantic name mm, SIMPO136 seems to have a magnetic field 200 times stronger than Jupiter's. Any electronics wouldn't even start working, so bad news for your gadgets. The human brain is an electrochemical machine too, so it'd probably have troubles functioning as well. You'd need Superman strength to lift weights on a neutron star. Imagine millions of Earths packed up into a ball a little bigger than Manhattan. With that kind of density, a teaspoon of neutron star material weighs 10 million tons. If you get to the surface, your body will be instantly squished down and spread in a layer one atom thick. Congrats, you're now two-dimensional. Now, if in 2D you could somehow still see, the view would be magnificent. All the stars crossing the sky thousands of times every second in all directions. It'd also be pretty dizzying. All right, sports and neutron stars don't mix. Do your powerlifting on Mercury instead. The gravity there would make you and your weights almost three times lighter. So if you normally weigh 200 pounds, you're now down to 76. You can also jump over four feet in the air. Don't practice your jumping on Comet 67P, though. Its gravity is so weak, your jump would surpass its escape velocity. That's the minimum speed you need to escape the pull of gravity, like rockets blasting off Earth. On this comet, you jump up and go floating off into space. Golfing on the moon would be fun. Your ball would fly for miles before the moon's weak gravity brought it back down. Better not try teeing off on Neptune. Methane winds blow 1,200 miles per hour, almost twice the speed of sound. Plus, there are no signs of a surface to make holes in, so a golf course would be more like a golf pool. Same problem with building wind power stations on the planet HD 189733b. Great energy potential in winds blowing at 4,000 miles per hour at Chicago to New York in about 12 minutes. But it rains glass there, so best to just stay away from this one. Better avoid dancing in the rain on Venus, too. Drops of sulfuric acid, about 20 times hotter than the air you breathe, falls from the skies. Plus, there's that immense pressure, 92 times heavier than here on Earth. Jupiter's moon, Io, looks kind of like a cheese pizza, don't you think? Maybe a moldy one? Its surface probably resembles a giant stove with burners everywhere. Those are all active volcanoes. Mmm, all this food talk makes me wonder. Could you eat or drink in space if there isn't enough gravity to pull your food down the chute? No, that's one thing you still could do. Muscles in your food pipe work to push stuff down into your stomach, not gravity. 
Yes, you technically can eat hanging upside down, though you shouldn't. If you like swimming, one of Saturn's moons, Enceladus, could make a nice new home for you. Under its icy shield, it might contain a salty ocean. A really cold one, so you'll need a warm diving suit. Double that up for swimming in the lakes of Titan, Saturn's largest moon. They seem to be made of methane. Or you could settle down on Saturn's other moon, Pan. If you're a fan of ravioli, it looks just like one. There's also Prometheus, Saturn's potato-esque moon. Imagine seeing all these weird shapes in the night sky from the planet's surface. If your hobby is metallurgy, the exoplanet Corot 7 b has a surface temperature that reaches 4,700 degrees. That's enough to melt and evaporate rock, not only metal. Kelt 9b might even be too hot for such a hobby. The surface temperature on the day side of this massive planet twice the size of Jupiter is higher than on some stars. It can reach 7,800 degrees. Our own sun is only a couple of thousand degrees hotter. If you like diamonds, exoplanet Janssen is one-third of the stuff. This diamond planet would cost around 27 known million dollars. Though, having traveled 40 light years from Earth, you could surely ask for a discount. Get a few of those 30 zeros taken off. You'll get the best pictures for your social media on TRAPPIST-1b. Orbiting its red star along with six other major planets, it must have magnificent panoramas at night. With up to six moon-like objects in the night sky, you'll be swimming in likes. Your calendar will be useless outside of Earth. Dr. William Herschel discovered Uranus in 1781. That's 239 years ago for us, but less than three years for Uranus, where one year lasts 84 Earth years. Since its discovery in 1846, Neptune only completed its first trip around the Sun in 2011. 165 years passed here on Earth. Pluto hasn't even had a year since we found it in 1930. That won't happen until the year 2178, 248 Earth years later. Some exoplanets have one year almost equal to a million Earth years. The good thing? They don't have to file their income tax return so often. Your watch won't make much sense outside of Earth's 24-hour cycle either. The shortest day in the solar system is on Jupiter and lasts less than 10 hours. The longest day is on Venus. It's 116 Earth days. If you're looking for some familiarity, head to Mars. Its solar day is 25 hours, not too different than Earth's. If you wear glasses or contact lenses, the universe has the most powerful one you could imagine – a gravitational lens. A massive object bends space-time around it and refracts light rays, just like other optical instruments such as glasses and microscopes. You can look at a star billions of light-years away and see four identical stars around it. But those are the same star. Its light is just being bent and quadrupled around it. You could search for your new home forever. Experts think the Milky Way galaxy alone has up to 400 billion stars, most with multiple planets orbiting them. And there are still billions of galaxies in the universe. So just imagine how many extreme and bizarre places are yet to be discovered. Good luck house hunting out there, it's a big market that's only getting bigger by the second.